So what I've got here is the um, first major electronics project that I ever built. Um, this was probably about 1982, 1983. <clears throat> so that puts me about 13, 14 years old. This uh, Heathkit audio generator, IG5282, and then also up, up above there, I'll bring it down too before this video is over. I have a uh, signal tracer, kind of a matching signal tracer to this that I also built. So I just kind of thought what I would do. These both need a little bit of work. I haven't used these in a long time. I think they need a little bit of deoxid on the switches and so on and so forth. But I just thought I would pull this apart and we'll see an example of my uh, workmanship at about 13, 14 years old. Now these came with some pretty cruddy probes that you were supposed to build with this thing. But let me uh, plug this in here and I'll show you. Now this this happens to be a scope I just bought not long ago and I'm having a lot of trouble with a lot of noise on it. So you're going to see some noise on the waveform but that's not coming out of this signal generator. It's coming out of this scope. But flip that thing on there and there we go it's actually pretty uh, pretty nice overall you can adjust the uh, signal amplitude up or down and then when you would you can of course it's variable so you can adjust the frequency itself as you can see the switches are a little bit spotty at the moment but I'm gonna pull the top off of this thing and let's take a look at it well here it is out of its box um, you see the two boxes over here and as you can tell it's shield all the way around Underneath, and you can see some of the wiring there. I'll pull this shielding off, and we'll get a little better look at what else is in there here in a second. Well, here we go with the shielding off. Um, it's a fairly simple unit overall. We got a big old tuning capacitor and just a transistor oscillator. But I hadn't looked in this in a long time, probably over 20 years, and it's been over 30 years since I built this. And actually, I'm kind of surprised that as a early teen, 13, 14 years old, I didn't have too bad of a uh, quality workmanship. Everything's pretty neatly done. The switch is getting pretty uh, oxidized, as you can see. I'm gonna, since I have this thing apart before I put it back together, I'm gonna probably give it a squirt of some deoxid. See if that doesn't help out things a little bit. Flip it over here in the back side, and most of the soldering is pretty good. I didn't remove the flux on here. I'm not sure why. Babe, but just simple matter I just sometimes I get to a point where I'm just wanting a project to be done and I'd get back to it later and well 30 some years later I never got back to it <laughs> might be just simple as that I don't know why I knew better at that time to remove the flux but one thing I did run into here recently as far as flux removal goes there's a HP Hewlett Packard bench brief from sometime in the early 70s where they were talking about flux removal in the field and they felt it was actually better to leave the flux on because otherwise you spread out all the organics and then it just corrodes everything but I don't know but everything kinda looks surprisingly nice 
this is pretty well preserved. Like I said, I built this, I'm going to say probably 1983. I don't think it was 1982. It was probably 83. I haven't been able to find a manual for it for years. I got a feeling it's probably somewhere still at my mother's house somewhere. Who knows where. I'd like to find it somewhere, the assembly and adjustment manual, because this probably could use some adjustments. But it comes in handy if you're trying to troubleshoot some audio equipment. Inject that signal in there and follow it around with a scope or with the, uh, with the uh, signal tracer, which will be the next thing. I'll shut this off now and I'll uh, bring out the signal tracer and we'll take a look at that, see if it's halfway as decent as well.